So actually, Adam in his talk mentioned that uh, data centers uh, should be here uh, can be considered as uh, batteries. And in this talk, I'm gonna uh, actually show that for the case of thermostatic controlled loads or TCLs, um, they are actually behave the aggregate flexibility of them behave like a battery. So this is joint work with uh, my colleague Hee Hao, Kamesh Rapula, and Tyrone Vincent. Sorry. Yeah. So a, a paradigm shift is happening uh, because of the renewable uh, integration. Uh, today, all, all uh, renewables are treated as, uh, as uh, negative load, and then we define something like net load, which is uh, demand minus uh, uh, renewable generation, and then we tailor supply to match this random load. Uh, tomorrow, or maybe even later today, um, renewables will be uh, market participants, and uh, we need to tailor demand to uh, basically match this uh, random supply. Uh, one solution would be uh, to use the flexibility of the uh, loads, uh, such as air conditioners, uh, heat pumps, refrigerators, commercial buildings, or electric vehicles, pool pumps, and I just added data centers uh, to, to, to do this. In this talk, I'm, I'm going to talk about TCLs um, and uh, show that uh, this type of loads can be used for, for ancillary service provision, particularly for uh, uh, regulating reserve uh, uh, service, which is for short, short uh, time scale. Uh, and um, we're going to sh show that uh, we, uh, we can leverage the thermal slackness of TCLs for, for this purpose. Of course, there are alternative uh, uh, options for, for this. We can use fast responding generators or um, uh, physical storage, but uh, there are limitations uh, uh, for these other options. For example, uh, using physical storage is uh, kind of expensive. So, so in simple words, uh, I'm going to show that a collection of uh, residential, uh, residential uh, houses, or let's say co air conditioners, uh, uh, can be used to follow a signal, a zero mean signal like this. And basically, this is the, uh, the residual between the one, uh, one hour ahead dispatch and the realized uh, uh, net load. So, so we are going to show that this collection of res residential uh, air conditioners can follow uh, this signal. Uh, of course, we are not the first one to do this. Uh, there is a large amount of uh, uh, other groups working on, the, uh, s s on, on this topic. These are just a few of them. But our main contribution is um, we are going to um, uh, provide a compact co characterization of the aggregate flexibility of uh, TCLs um, and show that uh, uh, the aggregate flexibility behaves like a battery. And we provide explicit relations for, for the battery parameters. Uh, so just to uh, give you the idea, so, so this is how we model each TCL. So it's a very uh, simple first order model. Um, so the blue curve is the temperature of each TCL. Uh, and there are two upper and lower uh, dead band with uh, red dashed lines here. And um, so the temperature increases until it hits this upper bound. Then it uh, turns on. The temperature decreases until this point where uh, we receive a signal from, from the uh, uh, system operator. And uh, we uh, actually turn off uh, this TCL at this point uh, earlier than supposed. And uh, we let its temperature to increase until it hits the upper boundary again, and then the normal control cycle would, would uh, continue. So this amount of time from between these two uh, black dashed lines uh, is actually the flexibility of this TCL in providing uh, power to the grid. So we turned off the TCL uh, over this time. Uh, so we basically cut the load. In other words, we are providing energy to the grid. Uh, so we call this scenario a discharging mode. So we are getting to the battery model. And uh, we can have a similar scenario uh, in a charging mode. Now consider a TCL. Uh, it's, it has its normal cycling. Its temperature is decreasing until it hits this lower boundary, and then it uh, starts to increase. And it's off now until this point where, again, we receive the signal. And now we have some excess in the renewable generation in the grid. So uh, what are the options? We can store that energy in a physical storage, but we don't want to do that. So we can actually use that extra energy we have, and we 
actually turn on this TCL at this, at, at this uh, time, let it temperature decrease until it hits the lower boundary, and again, the normal cycling. So again, this amount of time between these two dashed lines, uh, this, these two black uh, dashed lines, uh, is the amount of is the flexibility of it of this TCL of this TCL in observing uh, energy from the grid. So we call this a charging mode. So these are for for uh, you know for each TCL for in this case for the case TCL for example. And now, <coughs> excuse me, we are looking at a, a collection of TCLs. So for each TCL, um, um, and and of course there are uh, many other uh, you know. Uh, uh, scenarios that can uh, I can tell uh, the similar story. So, so there is a set of so this EK. There is a set of feasible signals uh, that uh, uh, is, is the which which describe the flexibility of uh, uh, the case TCL. So now we are looking at a heterogeneous collection of TCLs, and we want to find that what is the aggregate flexibility of this collection. We call that uh, aggregate flexibility as U, and it, it can be. Uh, written as the Minkowski sum of these individual uh, sets. Without going into the details, uh, I'm just going to uh, provide a theorem here. Uh, it's really hard to characterize this uh, aggregate flexibility set directly, but um, we actually could provide two uh, bounds for this uh, set, so two battery models, the necessary battery model, uh, phi n, and the sufficient battery model. Uh, and, uh, and of course, the, the gap that, the, that exists between these two models, the necessary and sufficient, comes from the heterogeneity of the collection. Uh, for a homogeneous collection, meaning that all the TCLs have the same parameters, uh, uh, we are going to have equality between these two sets. Uh, so, um, so again, without going uh, to the details, uh, I, I'm providing these two battery models here. Uh, the necessary battery uh, model and the sufficient battery model. Uh, first, you should know that uh, these battery models are characterized by three parameters, uh, like a storage device. So, uh, so a physical storage device has uh, three, three parameters, discharging rate, charge rate, and the capacity. Uh, and here, n minus is the discharge rate, uh, and plus, uh, sorry, it's the reverse. And plus is the charge rate and the capacity is C. So we provide three battery parameters. Uh, and um, the, the, the other thing is uh, all the, without going to the uh, notation, all the right hand side are functions of, uh, of the TCL parameters. So we provide uh, these three uh, battery parameters, uh, we provide explicit relation for the battery parameters based on the uh, TCL uh, model parameters. Uh, and um, so basically, we, so based on this theorem, we can, so you give me a, a collection of TCLs with their parameters, I can uh, characterize its uh, flexibility in providing uh, regulation service. Uh, so in order to do that, we also uh, suggest a kind of simple uh, control strategy, uh, a priority stack control. So, um, so at each at sample time, you construct two uh, different stack, the on stack and the off stack. And uh, in each stack, you, for example, in the on stack, you, you put all the on, uh, on TCLs in that, uh, in that uh, stack, and then you sort them based on their temperature distance uh, to the lower boundary. Uh, and also, you do the same. Uh, you put all the off units in the off stack, and you sort them based on their uh, temperature distance to the upper uh, temperature boundary, and then uh, based on the signal you received from the, the operator, you, for example, uh, you turn off some of the uh, uh, colder units here, and also you turn on some of the uh, warmer units. Okay, we actually uh, consider another thing, and that's short cycling of the units. So what you don't want to happen is a unit uh, to be turned on and off too quickly. So, there, there, um, so that's called short cycling. And uh, so we're going to allow certain amount of time between any two consecutive uh, 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 um, switching. Uh, so, so here you can see that when a unit uh, turns off, it's going to be unavailable for a, for a while. So we put them here. And then after that time passes, then they will be added to the office stack and similar for the uh, on units. 
Um, and uh, so we consider that too. Um, yeah. So, so let's uh, look at some simulations. So, um, so here we're con uh, kind of looking at a population of uh, 1,000 TCLs. And um, they have some par uh, model parameters. Uh, I'm not going into the details, but it's a simple first order model. Uh, and then we are going to use a uniform distribution, as Mario mentioned. So we are one of those that <laughs> are using uniform. But actually, our all of the framework can be, uh, you know, any any distribution can be used here or any uh, data. So um, so based on uh, uh, these model parameters, we go ahead and we uh, calculate these battery parameters, discharge rate. Uh, charge rate and the capacity for the sufficient and necessary battery model. And now, so we have these. Uh, so basically, these, these six numbers should describe the flexibility of this collection. And now, let's look at three different cases. Uh, so in the first case, um, uh, I have a regulation signal here, which is given to me, and uh, on, on, the top, on the top plot here. And um, uh, I'm also plotting these. Uh, these, uh, these uh, battery parameters, N minus N plus and C here, with dashed lines. Uh, and as you can see, uh, this regulation signal uh, is within these boundaries. And also on the lower plot here, I'm plotting the, uh, the state of charge of this regulation signal. And again, uh, I'm also plotting the, the battery parameters. So again, this signal is also within the battery, param uh, battery parameters. So, so we are not violating any of these uh, constraints. And of course, we have a uh, perfect uh, following of the regulation signal. So, uh, so basically, this collection we have can, can follow this regulation signal perfectly. We go to next case. Now we have a regulation signal whose state of charge is in the lower plot here, uh, is again within the boundaries. You see it's not touching any of these lines. However, uh, at these two points here uh, on, the, on the top plot, uh, we are violating the uh, necessary uh, discharge rate limit in this line, right? So the regulation signal is violating that uh, constraint. And of course, so at these two points, we are not following this signal. That uh, makes sense. We go to the, uh, the third example. Now we have a, another regulation signal on the top plot that uh, its magnitude is always within the boundaries, so we are not touching any of these uh, constraints. However, if you look at the lower plot here, where, where I'm plotting the state of charge of this uh, uh, signal, at this point, um, I am violating the capacity limit. And, uh, and of course, you can see that So this red curve is the deviation of what is achieved. Uh, uh, and the blue one, if you can see, is the uh, you know the regulation signal. So at this point, I'm I fail to follow this signal, and that's not because of the, uh, violating these constraints. It's because uh, I'm, I'm losing the capacity here. Yeah, I'm almost done actually. Um, so so these three examples show that how this theorem we provide uh, can be used for you know. Um, uh, analyzing a uh, collection of TCLs and uh, uh, understanding what's the uh, uh, potential of that uh, uh, collection in providing regulation service. Uh, so um, we also considered uh, in related work the potential economics and implementation issues with this uh, framework um, and also incentive design. Uh, but um, uh, the related papers are on my webpage. Um, and Thanks for your attention, and I would be happy to take any questions.